Hey everyone, welcome to Singularity Computers Modding, episode four. Today I'm going to take you through how I paint my radiators. Painting radiators is something that I often end up doing, and this is because of the generally bad quality paint jobs on most radiators. Often, by the time I receive my radiators, just due to the way that they're packaged and how thin and low quality the paint job is, the radiators are scuffed, scratched, and missing paint and I've even had rust on some radiators, brand new, when I receive them. Which is obviously the last thing you want in a brand new, extremely high-end water-cooled build. And that's because the outer panels on a lot of PC water-cooling radiators are steel. So, not just to improve the quality of your build, also the aesthetics. This is also a great place to start for beginner painters to you know, gain some confidence because painting radiators is easy, they're generally small, not much surface area, easy surface to paint onto, and put it this way, even if you are a beginner, you're probably going to end up with a better paint job than what is already there, but a great place to experiment with different products and effects. So I really suggest that if you're thinking about starting painting, that you start with your radiators, and you know, spray cans are fine for this. So I have four radiators for upcoming client build 20, Event Horizon, and these are all Black Ice 480 millimeter radiators, one of the new models. And the first step here is to mask them up. And you can actually get away with not even masking them, but any paint that you get on those fins is going to have an impact on performance. You know, you can kind of spray them in from from this side to, to do here and from this side you know you can miss the fins if you're really careful but you still end up getting a bit of paint on them and they're really not that hard to mask so I definitely suggest doing it. So step two is surface preparation then primer then whatever you're going to use you know base coat effects and then clear coat and you know a lot of the time I just end up doing a, a primer them and then just a satin black or something. But this time, to match up with the rest of the build, the theme, the custom paint job on the case, I'm going to be doing something a little more interesting. And, you know, most of you are just going to be using spray cans, but I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you some of the products that I use and the way I actually do this. So I have my paint gun here, my mask, gloves, I have 600 grit sandpaper for surface preparation. You know, this paint is already very flat and smooth. It barely needs any surface prep at all. I'm just going to, you know, scuff it back a little bit to help the paint to take a bit better and also to go over it with a fine tooth comb just in case there are any imperfections. I have some bolts here. You'll see what these are for coming up. I have painter's tape. And for the tape, I'm going to put links in the video description to everything that you need, but the best painter's tape is 3M. Definitely the way to go. I have just a screwdriver for opening the paint, good scissors for cutting the tape, because when you're masking this, you can't just tear it. It's very important that you cut it exactly where it needs to be cut to get right up to the edges. Now, the paints that I use for all of my builds are DNA. It's an Australian company extremely high quality. I get very good results with this paint and I'm extremely happy with it. You know, it's certainly a lot more expensive, but I would use nothing else for my client build. So I'm going to be starting with this DNA primer. And these are two packs, so I have to mix a reducer and a hardener. I'm then going to be moving on to this base coat, DuPont. It's a pearl, black magic. So it's a black pearl. And then finally, clear coat. And it, that's also a two pack. And with the clear coat, I'm going to be mixing some 100 nanometer blue flake. So with the tape, make sure you start with a nice, clean, even cut, because it's going to need to start right at the very edge of the radiator. Obviously you need to get right in under that edge. So you're actually better off cutting the tape to length first and when you have the correct length you can fit it in under that edge 
a little bit fiddly and difficult, but it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect either. I mean, if you get a little bit of, of overspray on the very edges of the fins, it's not going to make any difference. You know, this is not really that critical. I've completed masking up, and you can actually use anything to mask up. You know, you can use paper and tape the edges, or you can use any sort of tape. The thing about high quality painter's tape, particularly this 3M painter's tape, is that it won't leave behind any adhesive, so there's no cleanup to do. It won't peel paint off the surface. There's so many good things about it. There's also a massive amount of it on the roll. I find it lasts forever. You know, you can probably get one roll and do this 10 times. But now that all of the masking is done, I've moved on to surface preparation. And I actually, for this particular paint job, I ended up using Scotch-Brite instead of sandpaper because I was going to use 600 grit but these paint jobs are just so soft and thin and I mean all we're really doing is roughing up the surface just a little bit to help the paint to take and also removing any imperfections that are already there from the factory. So Scotch-Brite a lot of the time will work very nicely for this. Make sure you get a coarse Scotch-Brite. So you can now see what the bolts were for. Normally I hang my components with wire to paint them, but with radiators I prefer to do this. I have eight bolts on each radiator, four on each side, one in each corner on both sides so that I can obviously roll the radiator over to paint both sides. So this means it's up off the surface, it's in position, and it just makes it a bit easier. And now that the I've installed the bolts and the radiator is up off the surface, it's not going to touch a surface again and get dirty, I can actually give it the final clean. And what I use for this is just methylated spirits. There's a lot of products out there for cleaning up before paint. And you can try them if you want to. I just haven't had the greatest experiences with them and I find methylated spirits works incredibly well because it removes all of the oils and impurities off the surface and then it just evaporates. So really it's perfect and you know, it works very well for me, I've used it many times. So I'm just wiping it onto the surface with a microfiber cloth. You need to be careful not to scrub the surface too much because a lot of paints will actually be removed by methylated spirits. And you may not think this is a problem, but if the methylated spirit starts removing the paint, you're going to lose your nice smooth surface. The other thing I didn't mention is that you need to have the inlets and outlets all plugged up somehow. So I just have a lot of spare caps. These actually come with alpha cool radiators, these plastic ones, and they're perfect for painting. So make sure you do that, that's very important. I've now finished all of the surface preparation. So I've cleaned the radiators and I'm ready to start painting. The last thing I'm going to do right before I start painting is blow off the panels with high pressure air. Either that or you can use a tack rack. Very important once you start cleaning that you're wearing gloves. Whatever you use to clean the surface, whether it's Metho, like me, or one of the products that are designed for it, if you don't have gloves on, the oils from your hands are going to go straight back onto the surface and defeat the purpose of cleaning it. And I've actually seen fry ups in the exact same shape as fingerprints. You know, your surface preparation is incredibly important. Paint is very sensitive. Surface prep is everything when painting. The radiators are now all finished. It's the following day, so they've come up really nicely. And I'll just show you how bright the blue flake can actually be. So there you go. In the correct light from the correct angle, it really does stand out. Now this tape just works beautifully, never takes the paint off. 
and I definitely highly recommend it. It's just a whole lot easier to work with. You can see how much paint I ended up on the tape, which goes to show, I did mention the option of not masking the radiator and just letting a bit of overspray get onto the fins, but as I said it impacts performance. The more paint you get on the fins, the worse it's going to be. It is only a small amount, but still. But you can see that how much paint ends up on the tape when you paint properly because it's important to get good even coverage you know particularly here where there's going to be fans on the surface bolts in and out you want you know a good quality paint job there or it's going to be taken off so I'm now going to remove the plugs and you can see how nicely that's turned out there Obviously the fitting is going to cover up all of that. So that's about it. I'm very happy with the way the radiators turned out. That sums up this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like and favourite if you want to see more.